Okay, guys, let me go over the basics of what we're trying to do here, guys and gals. First of all, these are three charts we're looking at. Gerald, you can just stay on crude oil right here, on crude. First of all, this uh, uh, algo works on all markets. It doesn't matter if it's futures, stocks, currency, ETFs, even works on OEX options. Uh, whatever you look at, the system's going to work because the premise of the whole system or the methodology of the whole system is to buy and sell re retracements. Buy and sell retracements. We know the exact bar where to pull the trigger on any given market on any given day, any given time. Now, that being said, um, we have back testing software, which I'm going to show you right here tonight. Back testing software, you can back test this. The only thing this will not include the back testing software is market profile confluence. That's something that I'm adding right now to the algo that I'll get out to you down in the future here, where Gerald will just send you the file and you'll override the back testing software to include market profile ABC longs and shorts. It's something that uh, will be added. So the algo, which I'll be going over tonight, I'll go over in detail what it does. Um, when you do back testing, that does not include market profile confluence. Okay. I want, well, I want to repeat that. The algo on the back testing does not include market profile confluence. So it does include what I'm going to show you right here, right now, and that's what we're going to go over. So you can see the accuracy of the system. So what we're going to do is we have three time frames that we show in the live room. There's a couple ways you can do this. We show you crude oil and gold in the live trading room. And if you want to just trade those markets, um, the methodology is the same on all markets. It doesn't matter. So what, when I show you how we trade the system in a second, it doesn't matter if you trade the S&P 500, the DAX, copper, soybeans, corn. You can trade anything, any currency, the euro. You can trade the cross pairs, euro against the U.S. dollar, euro against the, um, uh, the British pound. Uh, you want to trade the Aussie. It really doesn't matter. Uh, NASDAQ futures, you know, YM, mini, it, whatever it is. It's plug and play. These templates are plug and play. So that being said, there's three time frames that I like to use with the system. Um, the first time frame, let me go over this. We have what's called a Rinko bar. And a Rinko bar has a lot of filters built into the Rinko bar already. They are great for us trend direction. So what I'd like to do, and I'll put, put these arrows on all these three charts to help you know where I'm at. What I like to do is I like to find the overall trend or the scope of the market first. The market can only do two things. It can either go vertical or it can go sideways. Any market you trade, doesn't matter what market you look at, they're either going to go vertical on you or it's going to be chop, a chop market or what's called a range market. That's all markets can do. So keep it simple. Either we're in a trend market or we're in a chop market. And there's no other two markets that, that, is, that you're going to run into on any given day on any given market. So we have to understand that. We have to understand, establish whether we're in trend or chop. The best way to do it if we're on trend or chop is we have to look at the moving averages. So I have a thick magenta moving average or pink moving average. I have an intermediate solid white and I have a smaller the smallest MA. I have three MAs on there on the trend chart. They tell me the overall scope of the trend. If my if my intermediate right here, which this is crossing down right there, my small is below my intermediate, my intermediate is below my larger. This tells me that I'm in a hard trend down. So all the way into the close from 1030 in the morning all the way to 4 o'clock at night, or I'm sorry, 5 o'clock at night, you were only taking shorts off this time frame. Now, i got three time frames that I like to use. And the largest time frame that I like to use is a 9 Simrinko. Now, will this work on larger time frames if you're a position trader? Yes, it does. i got traders going all the way up to a 15 Simrinko bar to only get a few trades a day because the trend filter is built into the Rinko bar. So that being said is I have a 9 Sim. That's my largest one, 9 Sim. Right next to that, you can see I have a 5 right there, a 5 sim. That's almost half a 9. And then my shortest time frame is a 3 sim Rinko. So those are the bar charts I'm looking at right now for you so you understand the, the bar types. We have a 5, we have a 3, we have a 5, a 9, 5, and a 3. So how do you put them all together and how do you look to enter trade setups 
I'll only spend five more minutes on this and I'll get right into the algorithm so you can back test this and see the results. What I like to do is I like to see the MA crossover. So we're crossed over right here. Once we're crossed over, that's the first cross. I like that small going down through the larger MA. That is what, what tells me I'm a possible move down. So once that crosses over, I can look at down here my uh, 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 my full retracement indicator, and it should tell me right here when it gets above 90%, I need to look for the trend, well, I mean for market delta to turn red. I want more sellers than buyers. I want more supply than demand right when this gets above over 90%. So when this goes over 90%, which it did, went over 90%, I want to see a red market delta bar. Red and market delta bar. It happened right there. And I'll blow this up so you can see it a little better. And then we'll skinny it back down. So what I want to see is I want to see a negative market delta right at that high, which we did. Right here it is. There's your negative market delta. Look at that negative bar. It's a spinning top, actually. And there is your, right here is down at the bottom, is your full retracement. You're above 90%. At the close of that bar, that's when you would open the position up to have a high probability trade. Your high probability trade, this is the 9 sim Reiko, would be the open of the next bar, your stop loss is two ticks above this swing high, and then you can let your first target come off, and that's why you have a back testing system. You're going to find out 12 to 15 ticks is a good target on, the, on crude oil for a runner to run. If you only go for eight ticks, a runner usually gets stopped out, break even plus one a lot. And that's why the back testing software will help you out with your targets. But usually 12 to 15 ticks is suffice on the first target. Very accurate that way. But that's a trade setup. Let's say you miss this trade. We start rolling down. Here we're rolling down. Right when these green bars come in, these are counter trend traders. Because remember, these Renko bars are different than other Renko bars. If the trend is down on the moving averages, I want these bars to close green. Why? because those are wrongly positioned counter trend traders that are going against the overall trend of the market. And this doesn't matter what market you trade. This is how you got to do it. So now we know that we're catching the wrongly positioned traders. I'm waiting for a full retracement. I just don't want to sell the if this turns green and then back red, I don't want to sell it because I'm relying only on the Rinko bar then. I need a full retracement. I need above 90% again. Once I get above 90%, there it is. Now if I want negative market delta, this is my negative market delta. Remember, I got this stuff built into these, the, uh, the supply demand built into these bars already. So when it closes red, you know you got more supply than demand. All right, closes red, you're good to go on the Renko bar. Closes red, you can open the position up. Next bar, stop loss two ticks above the swing high. There you go. Let's say you missed this one. Market's rolling down. Now what we have is green bars come in again. Counter trend traders now pump the market back up. All right, when I was a guest speaker two years ago in the Las Vegas Futures Trade Show, there's over around 6,000 traders out there. And I keep telling members this, that I never met one counter trend trader that made money. And I talked to a lot of traders, and I was a guest speaker out speaking to over 6,000 traders around the whole world. I met a lot of traders that lost a lot of money, a lot of money, counter trend trade the market. So our methodology is different. We're trying to trade retracements with trend direction. The only time we'll counter trend trade is around 15% of the time, and that's getting back inside of my market profile, retesting it on my developing profile, which my members know how to do. 85% of the time, though, you're trend traders with retracements. So we get green bars, bop, 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 back up. Okay, the first bar that comes in, you notice up here, did it get above 90%? Yes, it did, 90%. And what I have right there is a what? I have a, gray, a red reversal bar, and now we're rolling down again. What some traders are even doing, because I got a trend filter built into this Rinko bar, they're, they're, they're looking for this to go back below 90% again. And what they'll do is they'll put a contract, some contracts on here at the open of this bar, and they'll add to their position once it goes 90%, three bars later, to add to their position. And we do have traders doing that that are members in the room right now. So that's your methodology on the larger time frame. Now, larger time frames will have larger stops. So what you can do if you want smaller stops, and you can back test all this on time frames, you can go to your smaller time frame next door, which is the Rinko bar, five sim Rinko bar. Now you can tell 
my large time frame was in a downtrend from 1030 all the way to the close. Okay. Well, let's, let's go some more trades so you can see it first. So here's the next trade. You can see negative market delta, full retracement. Next trade, negative market delta. You can see the pattern all the way down. All right, so I don't have to teach you that. Here it is. There it is. So let's get into this. This is my large time frame, 9 sim. So this is your large time frame. Let's say you said, hey, the large time frame is way too, such a large time frame, and I want to get smaller stops. So how you can do it is if my large time frame right here is in a downtrend from 11 or 10.30 all the way to the close of 5 o'clock at night. So you're over seven hours, seven and a half hours of just trending down. What I can do then is I can take a smaller time frame, my 5 Simrico next door. Now what I can do with the 5 Simrico next door is this. I can actually, yeah, these templates are all made, David. Yeah, you should, a drill should have sent the templates out to you. Yeah, as soon as you sign up, these templates are plug and play. So you should have a 9 sim, 5 sim, and a 3 sims right beside it. All right, so what you want to do then, and if, if you don't, Gerald will get you set up, David. He'll get you going in the right direction. So if you're looking at a smaller time frame, what I want to do is I want to look for full retracements on a small time frame with the trend of the large time frame. So how I want to do it is, is I want to look at getting into this these positions on a full retracement on a 5 sim Rinko that is actually what? That is actually at a full retracement on the 5 sim. So if I'm at a 5 sim full retracement, then I want to be what? Oops. I want to be looking for a indecision bar, which the buyers equal the sellers, that vertical line with negative market delta. That's a trade set up. Next trade gets above 90%. Right there is an indecision bar, negative market delta, caught the exact high on that bar. Next one, same thing. Wait till you get above 90%. Above 90%. See how it never got above 90% right here? And you're oscillating, you're turning green, red, green, red. Buyers or sellers are battling back and forth. Counter trend traders push it up one more time. You get an indecision bar where it's a vertical line. That means you have a possible turning point. It's above 90%. Another entry off this level. So you can see that's how you can do it. You can do it. And then what happens is you'll get a transition, which I'll show you when you go back to the buy side. So that's on a smaller time frame. If you want to break it down further, you can break it down into the three sim for more trades. Now the three and five, that's my top ones to use on the S&P 500. We have a lot of S&P 500 traders that use a software that's outside the room. You know, a lot of traders don't trade crude oil and gold that I show. I just look at those two markets because they're volatile, and, and that's what we've always done. But a lot of traders trade the S&P 500. This system works excellent with the S&P 500. I love the 5 and 3 sim on the S&P 500, which I'll show you what it looks like in a sec. So that's what we're trying to do. The 3 sim next door, I love trading this, which, which, what, with, which what I called market profile confluence. What this means is this. I'm trying to take ABC longs or ABC shorts. What does that mean? What it means is if I break below, this is where the control point today was, and this is where the low value area was on my market profile. What I want to see, I want to see full retracements when my market profile breaks inside, retest, and I want to see that retest, I want to see a full retracement, negative market delta, or a vertical bar with negative market delta. Every time I see a full retracement, if it's a break retest of profile, I will take these trades because they're high probability trades. Okay, Those are the trades that I'm trying to educate traders that those are the good ones because now you have market profile confluence. So you can use the 3 sim Rinko or the smaller time frame to do what? You can use it for break retest trades of market profile with full retracements on the indicator below. So these are called ABC patterns. Here's where the control point was. It broke down. Green bars come in. Moving averages are crossed down on the smaller time frame. It's already going with the 9 sim trend, which is our big, big trend. But this is a very, remember, this is a 9 sim Rinko. This is a 3. So this is way, way smaller. So your stops are going to be around 9 to 10 to 11 ticks. So you're risking around 90 to $110 per trade instead of risking more on a larger time frame. So the three sims, if you're, if you're a $90 risk and you get in at the open of this next bar at 
and you just had a $400 trade, you just had a four to one reward to risk. So you can see trading off the smaller time frames are, are neat because you can afford yourself smaller risk on the setup if you get stopped out. So the bottom line is, is you trade it the same way though, is that if my nine sims in a downtrend and my moving averages cross down on my smaller time frame and I get the first retracement back up, if I see that's at a full retracement, then wait for that close of the negative market delta. Your stop loss is two ticks above the swing high. And there you go. What you're going to find with market profile, here's what I mean by this. It's lovely when you add this to the system. Let me show you why. Market profile is a golden child when it comes to support and resistance off LVA and HVA. When, when I see LV and HVA retest, meaning break, retest, my solid green line or thin green line, my solid red line or thin red line. I don't care so much about my green dots and red dots. Those are for confluence. But when I see the market break through a solid line or thin red line, green line, and I get all green bars back up, as soon as I get a full retracement on what I just showed you, that's a great setup because it just broke, retested. This one broke retested this one broke retested you want to see your full retracement indicator come in now guess what your full retracement indicator if you look at it did not get a full retracement so you want to trade that one it waited until you got a full retracement on the break retest there and then here's another retest so what you can do is profile is simply if you break inside or outside a profile very simple you break inside or outside a profile so in other words if I'm outside a profile right here if I break outside of it, I simply look for a retest of it, look for a full retracement on those charts that I just showed you. That's great confluence. I break back inside of the solid green, the thin green, red I mean, come down, green bar, green bar, green bar. Guess what? It caught the exact high on my full retracement right here. Then what it did, it had a, a retest right here, break retest right here. This blue line was actually up here this morning because it shifted on us. The blue line was actually right exactly there on the retest. And it broke, retested, and we had a huge short right there with market profile confluence. My point is, and this is how you can see it over here on the smaller time frame, these are where the market profile levels were at the time. So when you see your smaller time frame break and retest those levels, and you're at full retracement at the same time, you got totally a different strategies, a different strategy working for you at the same time. You got confluence. All right, this has worked for 34 years, the same exact setup. Market profile break inside or outside a profile, the thick red, blue, or green line, because that's all the volume come in the market. That's not my opinion. That's not your opinion. It's not a lagging indicator. It's not a stochastic. It's not a moving average. It's not a moving average convergence divergence. It's none of that baloney. It is true volume measuring volume coming in the market, because that thick blue line you see on market profile, that's measuring all the average, the highest volume in the market on that particular instrument. Okay, that's the highest point that that's that measures your control point. All right, that's the most volume that's traded in that instrument. It creates natural support and resistance. The red line is derived from that blue line calculating. So when it breaks that red line and you retest that red line, guess what? You got yourself a full retracement trade also. And that's what you got to look for. You got to look for break retest trades to give yourself confluence. Like I said, uh, a, a trade this morning that uh, Mike was in the room. And he's saying, what would you look at on gold on the next trade? We were up here at the time. And here's how you look for trades using full retracements, using market profiles confluence. We were right here at the time this morning, right there. And we broke. I said, wait for an HVA break, a low value area break, the, the, the green line. We broke. We retested. Guess what? We were at a full retracement. He got short right there at the 98 level. He had a great short. How did, he, how did we project that? Because we know break, retest, red, green, or blue. And you look for full retracements on the other indicator to give you confluence. So you can actually use market profile, guys, with your full retracement indicators. All right? So, and it works on gold the same way. If I bring gold over, it works on any market. If I bring gold, it doesn't take the smartest bear in the woods to realize this is a setup right here. Right there. That is a full retracement. I got below 10%. I got all red bars, red bars, red bars, red bars. There's my positive market delta. And then we start moving back up again. So, and it doesn't matter what, like I said, what market you trade, it's the same methodology. If I look on the smaller time frame on the five sim rank on gold into the close, 
All right, we were up on our, our 9 SIM, our 5 SIM confirmed. Right here again, look at your full retracement. It gets below 90%. You get a full retracement, you get a pump into the market on the upside. So if you trade the S&P and you're looking at S&P trades and you want to try to find some trades on the S&P, you can just change this to the S&P and you can see what the S&P looks like. It's the same exact methodology. I'll, I'll put all three time frames on here. Then we'll get into the algorithm I'm doing back testing. Wait till the switch is over. And I want to show you it's the same exact method, though. We're trying to buy and sell retracements overall trend push. All right. So let's take a look at the S&P right here. S&P. So if I'm an S&P 500 trader, if I'm an S&P 500 trader going into the close, this is uh, 9.38 till 5 o'clock at night. So this is a whole trading day. So when the New York opened up, let's look where the New York opened up right here. Let's take a look at did the system call the trades. Sure did, didn't it? It's a 5 Simrenko right here, 5 Simrenko. All the settings are already pre-programmed for you, so you don't have to change your settings. You can find more optimal settings on back testing if you want. I'm giving you what I like the best. Not to say I got the best settings, but when you do back testing, you'll find out if you get better settings and you can do it. That's why I have back testing software for you. But I already got these settings pre-programmed for you. So there is a below 90%. So I'm below 90% there. I'm in an uptrend right here. I crossed over. I'm in an uptrend. There's red bars, red bar, red bar, red bar, red bar. So we got a red bar waiting for green market delta, green market delta to that exact bar called the exact entry. After that close, your entry would be right at the open of the next bar. Your stop loss at two ticks below the swing low right there. Are we at below 10% for a full retracement? Yes, we are. Some traders, like I said, what they like to do is they like to see us get into a full retracement, get back above 10% with my indicator below and see positive market delta and enter at this next bar for confirmation. You can do that if you want. You're going to lose about one bar if you do that. A lot of members do that though. All right, so next bar we come up. We're obviously in a hard uh, uptrend. Wait, you got to wait for a full retracement. No full retracement, no full retracement. Uh-oh, here we go. Back below 10%. This is an entire session on the S&P today. We're not cherry picking trades. I'm just showing you what happened. Five Simrico. Here you go. There's your market delta. There's your positive market delta. And below 10% full retracement. You get another shot at the S&P in the close. And these are big moves, guys and gals. These are not small moves. This right here is a 84 buy. And that sucker ran all the way up to 13.02. Over 17-point trade on the S&P with two ticks below the swing low. This one buy was 12.92, so 92 and a half fill all the way up. That's a 10-point S&P move with two ticks below the swing low. So you probably ask yourself, well, what type of fills am I going to get on this? Well, let's just take a look at risk on a 5 sim rinko with the S&P. If I look at the high where you're going to get filled on live fills, I always like to look at the high of the, of the entry bar because that's typically on a live fill where you're going to get filled with slippage. It's typically right there at that bar. Not unless you do a, a backfill, which a lot of traders do. At the open this next bar, they'll backfill two ticks and try to get filled there. Um, so that's you can do that also. But let's just look at the high of the bar. The high of that bar is 12.93. The low of that bar is 12.90.5. So you can tell yourself right away what kind of risk level you're going to get just by looking at the high of the qualified bar. So if you want smaller stops, you can actually look at the high of that bar. It's probably where you can get filled with slippage in the market. So you can tell right away what your risk level is on any given trade. And then when you back test it, you're going to know. So these are three for three since 945 on the five sim Rico. The S&P was three for three. Just a huge move up. Like I said, that was about a 94, 84, almost a 20 point S&P run. But these are all entries right there. So. Like I said, it doesn't matter time frame. If you want to go smaller time frame, let's look at the S&P smaller time frame. So you want smaller stops. What you want to do, you want to do the same thing. All right, right here, we were in a serious uptrend right here. 
in a, on the larger time frame. So when it crossed over and matched on the three cent, these are all entries. Check this out. Entry. These are all entries with small stops. Entry. 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 It all, none of them got stopped out. Entry. This one would have been stopped. Let's look at a stop real quick. Hey, take a look at this real quick. Let's take a look at a stop. The reason I say two ticks below the swing low, let's say you get below 10% on a small time frame. And then all of a sudden, you know, closes a positive market delta, which you did here. I'm going to show you why I keep it two ticks below the swing low. See how it closes there? And it turned negative market delta to the next bar. If you see your neg market delta turn negative market delta, I'm going to show you what market delta is, the next bar, do yourself a favor. Take a small stop. Right? Because it should follow through. What do I mean by that? Let me show you. Because these all worked out all the way up. This is, is one, two. Three, four, five, six, seven. Had seven trades before that that were nice trades. And then one, two, what, three, almost three trades into the close. But let me show you what I'm talking about market delta. So that's a small time frame you can get. Let's say that you want to enter on a trade that's set up right here. And you want to get long. Well, if I look at that bar, if I want to look at that bar entry, the high of that bar is on the S&P is 1290.75. The low of that bar is 1289. So you get a $1.75 risk just from the high and the low. All right? You take two ticks below that swing low, you're risking 225, 225 on this time frame. All right? So you can tell right away what your risk is and what you can put under the back testing the back test and see what kind of uh, results you can get from that. But let's look at market delta. Let me show you a market delta here. Well, the reason I'm talking about market delta to confirm these is this. All right, if you get in trade the market delta, it should confirm. Okay. Now this is a larger time uh, market delta. This is a larger Rinko. If I go to a smaller Rinko to confirm these, you can go to three or four. You can match it up with that. Let's say you trade off a three or four or five. You can match up the delta to go with the overall Rinko bar. So that way, if you get in a trade and the next bar turns an opposite color, meaning let's say you get in this trade right here because this was a setup actually. Pause the market delta. If that changes negative market delta the next bar, you better get out of the trade with a small loss because there's no way you should have more supply than demand right after the first market delta. Or this is a buy setup too. This is a full retracement. If that next bar was red, I would get out. In fact, I like three bars in a row, one, two, three, one, two, three. You know, some, some members just like to use one after. If it turns one, then they'll just get out of the position at a real small loss. Okay? Because you want, if let's say you're trying to catch a high. Let me find a high here. Right here. You're trying to catch a high. As long as that next one, here's an entry. This is negative market delta. As long as this doesn't close green, I don't care about this closing green four bars later because you're already into the trade. Let it roll. I care about that market delta closing out of the next bar, and that's going to keep small losses. But sometimes what you get, and this is a smaller time frame because it's changing back and forth. If you get into, let's say, a nine market delta, if you want to pull it below, below your nine Rico, well, then you can see you can position trade this thing. Here was a buy setup we had this morning. Buy setup right there. Look at that run you get in the S&P before it turns negative market delta and right back to positive market delta. That was an entry right there. Negative market delta, that means you got counter trend traders. And right back to positive market delta. What this indicator, now let me show you what the algorithm is then, how to back test this. What a Momo trade is this? A momentum trade will catch these two trades on the algo back testing. It will get this entry on any time frame, and it will get this entry. Let me break down what the algorithm does here a little bit. Then I'm going to show you I can back test. This is not a momentum buy. This is a retracement buy. I got a real. You can put in a small moving average, which I have it on here. Here's a small MA into your algo and say, hey, I don't want to take any trades if it's below this algo. In other words, you can get momentum trades and only trade momentum trades if you want. Or you can do both and uncheck it. So when I show you what MOMO means, that just means 
if I get a buy set up, because my trend filter said that's where the wrongly positioned traders or the counter trend traders red bar against overall trend is. This is where counter trend traders are getting in right there when it closed red against trend. So when it closes back green, I know that I'm ready for trend again. My, what I'm saying is, I'm going to show you in the algorithm in a second, this is what momentum is. It will only take momentum bars that are above. And I'm going to go over this in detail when you guys actually um, start looking at this thing. And we'll have our next, we'll have our next um, one in a couple weeks only for members that have the algorithm. And I'll break it down. But that's a momentum trade, which you can back test. And this is a retracement trade. Or you can retrace, retest, you can test both at the same time. Okay, so let's get into the algorithm now since you guys know my methodology. How can we backtest this? All right, so what we have right here is, first of all, this does not, I'm going to tell you again, this does not include market profile, the backtesting. I am developing it now. It's a free upgrade. Once Gerald gets everybody coded, it may take me about a month or so to get it done. Once I get market profile, in other words, it will not show you any trades at all until or back to see trades until market profile has broken retested I'm actually working on it right now so this back testing software has has the all the trend filters of the Rinko bar built into it that's what's really important and then it has these other bells and whistles which I'll list here in a sec so what you can do is you can put your standard uh, MAs in here and in fact what let me show you what you can do here first of all When you backtest this thing, and like I said, when we get into this more in depth, when everybody gets this in their hands, I'm going to show you exactly how to hit the backtesting button. I don't care if you have a lot of experience or no experience. Let's just go optimization. So what you can do when you optimize this, you can put any moving average. If you want to use, you can start with one. Who says, who's to say I got the best moving averages for trend direction on all these time frames? Who's to say I got the best ones? I think I got the best ones. I mean, I've, I've run this thing so many freaking times and blown up so many computers. I think my, my settings are pretty good, but who's to say I'm right? Who's to say I got the optimal settings? So you can put this 1 to 200. It'll tell you what the best fast MA is, what the best slow MA is. Okay? Use cross means this. It's got to be above this MA, whether it be above the one MA or find the most optimal MA to be above it. If you don't worry about, if you're not worried about the first cross trade, meaning the moving average is crossing over and the first retracement, you can just click that to false. The stochastics, this, uh, you can find the ultimate stochastics where the market needs to be over uh, at an exhaustion phase when the trend filter is saying to buy and sell. In other words, I don't want my Rinko bar posting a green reversal bar with positive market delta or for a buy if it's not in an exhaustion point. So I have the optimal optimal settings optimal settings already sent to all you members. These are just standard settings that are not what I'm sending you, but this is just showing you what you can do. But who's to say my settings are the best? You can put this to one all the way up to 200 or 300, whatever you want. Your look back, that's how many bars that it has to be overbought, oversold, but you can optimize these overbought, oversold. Momo. I just showed you what Momo was. Momo is this. Momo says if this moving average is a 20 moving average, or a 50, I'm sorry, I got 50 up here right now. If this is a 20 moving average, it's telling me that this market has to be above that 20 or below that market when my trend filter gives a buy or sell on a retracement. What that tells you is the market's in a high blow off, buy off, or sell off, either trying to mark the market up, mark the market down. You can back test it with it on, you can back test it with it off. Remember, if this is confusing on back testing, I'm going to go over this in a couple of weeks. But we already have our standard settings that work plug and play. This is just for traders that really want to build their own indicator. Okay, start time. You can look at all these trades, qualified trades. Now, remember, this is without market profile between any time. So if you just trade from 7.30 Eastern to, let's say, 10 o'clock, show me the best time frame that I should be using. I'll show you how to do that in a second. And for this market and the best target one, target two, trailing stop loss, stop loss. So what you can do now you can find out what the best target is, what the best target two is, what the best trail is with these targets. What, so you can put this starting with 10, let's say, if you want to start with 10, and go all, go all the way up to your first target of 20. 
right here, and they'll tell you what your optimal setting is. I like 12 to 15. If you like uh, S&P, it would be lower. I actually like 6 to 8 on my first, t first target. But you can – so if you're trading the S&P, you can go, well, I want to make sure I get at least four ticks, a point, up to 20 points on my first target. And then I'll go your second target. Then you put your trailer. You know, it'll optimize it for you. Your stop, what this means, stop offset. And I, like I said, I'll go in this in more detail getting it to you. But what that means is that's two, this says three ticks above the swing high. It's going to stop you out. You can go one to three, see which is better. You can go to zero to three. I wouldn't go more than three ticks offset, though, because what that is saying is it's going to optimize your settings for anything that is between one and three ticks above the swing high or below, or I mean zero to one. Uh, what I find an optimal setting is two ticks. Entry offset. The algo will get take trades right now at the open of the qualified bar. So the, let's say this is a trade set up when it turns green over here. It will open up the next bar plus one tick for slippage. So you can optimize this and say, okay, well, I know I'm getting around three or three tick slip sometimes or two tick slip when I enter trades. So let me just optimize. Let me, let me see what kind of results I get with the settings I use if I go two ticks entry, you know, from the open or three ticks or four ticks. It'll optimize it for you. Order cancel bars. That means, will do I have a qualified trade? Um, I got to have a qualified trade, or it's not going to show me any entries for X amount of bars. I would not put that more in five bars because the market can change within five bars. Then we have a profit goal daily stop. The algo automatically shuts off if the profit goal is, you know, whatever it is, or daily stop. It will not work. If you're back testing and you don't and you do not know what settings you want, and you're trying to figure this thing out and you're trying to sim trade it, put don't put your daily stop low because the algo won't show you any trades if you are not if you're trying to optimize your settings. I put at least a thousand dollar daily stop so at least you can optimize your setting. Once you get close to what you want then put it down to 300 or 250 for the day or whatever you want to do. You know, but it won't work if it hits the daily stop right away. A uh, delta, what that means, if it's true delta, if, if it's marked true, that means when this comes up, this green reversal bar, because that's what the algo is looking for, is trying to catch the wrongly position traders. What the delta is trying to do is it's saying, hey, I'm not going to get in until it's positive market delta after the trend filter says buy. So if you say true, you can put whatever delta you want to trade off of. So if I go to delta, I want to go to Rinko bar, and I can go any delta I want to. So if I'm, if I'm looking for, this is a nine sim setup right here, and I want to only go five sim delta. Let me explain this. I don't want to lose you. You can now look for entries off the nine sim trend, the largest cape trend, and enter for entries only when delta is positive on a smaller time frame and it will stop out at that smaller time frame. Let me explain. If I have a nine cent setup, this is a nine cent setup over here to my right when the bar turns green. The algos wants to post a buy. If it's if you have delta to false, it's going to post a buy right there when that green bar turns. If it's positive market delta or negative market delta, it doesn't matter. It's it's going to post it because it's a green bar. It's more buyers and sellers. But if you want the delta to more qualify it, you can go, okay, I want to trade off the 9 sim. So I'm going to use a 9 sim chart, but I'm going to use delta to enter off a smaller time frame. So with, when that closes red, then if I get a positive market delta on a smaller time frame, it's going to get me in with that delta. It will not give me out a stop loss until that delta closes the opposite color, and then it'll show me a profit or a loss. In other words, it's going to take your first target is going to be when delta closes the opposite color. What does that mean? Let's say I put a nine delta on this. So I'm trading off a nine delta and a nine entry. That means if I enter at this bar, it's not going to sell for the first target until I get to that first red delta. On this one, it's not going to get me on my first target until that first red delta. Okay, so that's what delta is used for. Okay, so you can use this delta to get in smaller time frames using a larger delta, I mean larger chart entry with smaller stops. Pretty cool feature. The next one is balance, I mean, uh, uh, not balance of power, but um, the um, the buy offer, uh, buy offer or sell, sell bid. What that means is, let's say that you want to get the best available price on your algo when you're testing this. 
and you don't want to do limits. If you put this to true, it's going to override the entry offset ticks. It's going to get you in the best available price. A lot of traders, when they see a trade set up and there's a qualified trade, they want to hit that buy ask or sell offer. It's going to get you, in the, it's not a market order, it's going to get you the best available price. Okay? So, that is what the ingredients are. Now, when you back test all this, with all the bells and whistles, remember, true, false, you cannot back test delta. You can only live test it. Why? It's all supply demand when the market's ticking. So you're going to have to forward test that when you are actually letting it run sim live. What I do is I how I tested this is put the chart on on a nine sim, put a four or a five or a three sim delta, and see how it performs because you're forward testing it. You cannot back test delta. So that's going to, have to be if you want to see actually what it does over the last year, you can't do delta. You got to you got to live test it. That's the only thing you can't do. You got to put that to false. But if you want to see how Delta works with the system, you put that to true and let it run live. Okay, that's one thing I'll show you coming up how to do also. Okay? So all these ingredients, you can put everything to false. What I have, I have everything to false, what I'm showing in the room. All this stuff is false. Momo's false. First cross is false. Uh, Delta is false because you can see Delta in the room. Uh, buy, ask, sell, offer is false. All that stuff is false. That's how I would start out. And then you can actually build your own indicator, okay, from that. Now, that being said, this is not an auto trade program. This is a back testing software program. What we will do and offer after we get everything into it, you can see this is a very complex, sophisticated system. Once we get this down the road, that's something we're going to offer to our long-term members, okay? We will offer it and let you go at it. But we have to do our due diligence, making sure you understand how this thing runs and works. If you can't make money anything in SIM, then you sure so ain't going to make money with live money. Okay, so, you know, this is for a back testing to help you out to optimize, to know the efficiency of what I have in the room that you're, that you're looking at. 